Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we have a very tired, weary group post Vegas boot camp. We've got the Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. And, and you want to know why? Why? It's because so many people came up to me at boot camp and said they love Oh, no, 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 no. Stop, I didn't stop. hear a single person Just say that. E- exact, edit, 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 stop. We don't, <laughs> Mark, don't even continue on with this conversation. It, it I, doesn't matter. I, have, I have edited it. Ah, stop. Next topic, please. Jeannie, you know, how was your weekend, even though you weren't at boot camp? Jeannie, you got Jeannie Worm on the podcast. How are you, Jeannie? You guys are so much fun. You really are a lot of fun, you guys. <laughs> see, G- see, now, of the, of the roundtable, Jeannie Worm was the only one not at Vegas. So she's going to be carrying the roundtable podcast today. But Jeannie, let's face it. Everyone loves Mike, right? They really do. He's got a great personality. He's so easygoing, you know, just loves people. He's easy to yeah. love. <laughs> he's, he's easy to love but speaking of, of of lovable people we've got the guy with no nickname eric no nickname peterson eric how are you i'm good how you feel well i'm recovering yesterday was a little rough today's a little better um you know the long weekend they're long days boot camps intense boot camps intense and you think the the guy the like the Olympic cyclist would like have tons of energy, but even Tate the big Papa Litchfield's dragging. Tate, how are you? I'm feeling good, Mark. I'm feeling really good. Oh, he's drinking from his uh, <laughs> team. Tate really good. Oh, mug. you want to from, see the backside? You wanted to see the backside? Big it's Papa. his big Papa. So <laughs> Ken and, and Karen Archibald love to poke the rest of us, sort of, you know. Scott, did yours make it home safe this time? No. Yes, it did. <laughs> no, it, it got smashed in the airport. I don't know what happened to it. Well, I know Mark's made it yeah. home, so. My, no mine made it home, and my wife's like, wh- who's the big papa? I'm like, I love it when you call me big papa. Like, Tate. My wife doesn't even listen to the, to the, uh, the podcasts. And oh, then, of course, so you know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. Landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, Matthew Forbes made Scott Todd an actual bat. What does your bat say, Scott? It's got three things. One that says, uh, mail every day to keep this bat away. It's got the land geek logo and it says, Scott Todd's flight school mailing bat, baby. I mean, it's a real bat. It is an official. This thing is a workout. Used. Yeah. Listen, this thing is like a workout. I, I couldn't believe that they wouldn't let me take this on the plane. They're like, dude, that's a weapon. I'm like, a weapon? What am I going to do with it? Smack somebody? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So I had to check it. Yeah. So th- this is the power of flight school. If you want to know the, the power of the, of the flight school bat, now it's a real bat. Schedule a call with Mike Zane or Scott Bossman. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. So let's just get into it. So uh, our first topic is nightcap. Our live, our first live nightcap in Vegas at boot camp. Um, Mike Zana, what was that like for you? It was awesome. Scott Bossman and I, uh, we had a blast. I mean, we got to interview all of the big wigs. We brought them all in one after another. And, uh, I don't know. I think, you know, uh, what we what we lost and maybe the best audio we made up for and just the kind of just the presence of the people we had with us. It was it was awesome. I mean, we were feeding off the uh, of the energy of the uh, first day. Right. The first uh, first that was Friday night. So it, it was incredible. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be a great genie is that in Scottsdale boot camp in August, you and Kurt can come on as a couple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On the nightcap. Wow. All, de- all the deals you've done, <laughs> which is kind of cool. So, wait, now, Jeannie, did you see the nightcap yet? I've seen it, but I didn't see the most recent episode. Looking okay. forward to well, it. We'll have to get your review. So, 
NICAP was, was really fr- pretty fun during the, uh, the networking hour. And uh, actually, you know, we say it's a networking hour, but Eric, how long does that thing go? <laughs> <laughs> it goes more than an hour. It definitely goes longer than an hour. <laughs> for sure. Which, I mean, I think is great. Like, our, our community is amazing. I mean, every, you know, everyone bonds. You know, what's funny is like, even the, like when we have breaks, people don't want to come back. Like they're still talking and, and, uh, and kind of bonding. So Scott's got some good, good advice for me to get people back in the room. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. So if and you it's wanna, not the door prizes either. Go figure. And it's not, yeah, it's not the prizes. So it's going to be cool. But um, if you want to register for boot camp, you got to go to the landgeek.com forward slash boot camp to register for Scott. So we already have like 15 registered. So get that, get in there before we fill up for sure. Tate's like, I'm so tired. He's like, is this over yet? <laughs> I am tired. I'm tired. You know, it was such a, it was so fun. Like boot camp is, it's really fun, but it's, it's exhausting. We put a lot of work into it and it takes a few days to recover afterwards, but ultimately it's such a good environment that, I can't stay away from it. I don't know. No, I I know. I know. Well, let's, uh, let's get into the boot camp takeaways. Uh, this is, you know, specifically just for Jeannie. She wants, cause she wasn't there. She's like, well, what were the biggest boot camp takeaways? Um, I've got, I've got one, but I'm going to save it for Jeannie. Tate, what was your biggest boot camp takeaway? You know, my biggest boot camp takeaway is, it was more of a realization that uh, we're all in this together, right? Everybody's starting their land journey at a different spot. And if you get to attend the VIP room, you really start to realize this more and more that, you know, people, whether you're just starting the business or you're a seasoned vet like Scott, we can all learn from one another. And there's always something that, uh, you know, you're going to take away. So, I really enjoyed the sense of, you know, community and just relationship building and, and the intimacy that uh, I got to take away from boot camp. And it's cool to see how everybody's willing to share their ideas and help one another. And just, I guess that sense of community, if, if nothing else, it was that we are members of the greatest community out there as far as real estate investors. So I really like that about boot camp, And it's something that you won't experience anywhere else. You got to come, you got to experience it in person, you know, in Scottsdale in a few months. Yeah. Uh, people ask me like, how come you don't record it and like sell it? Because it's special. That would be, you know, sort of like being a sellout. Like you got to be in the room, right? Scott Todd, what's that Hamilton song? The room where it happens, right? Got to be in the room where it happens. Cause if you're not, you're not there. I think that, there. um, I think Tate's right. I mean, like you, you look at where everybody is and, you know, Mark, it's so easy to look at, it's so easy to think about like um, things from your own business perspective, like, oh, I should be farther or, uh, you know, we, we oftentimes put artificial deadlines on things and we put more pressure on ourselves. Like, oh, I need to be farther or other people are lapping me. And, you know, it's funny because, because of that, you start to get down on yourself as opposed to just, I'm just going to trot away. I'm just going to do this every day. I'm just going to do the best I can. And then what happens is you start to put more pressure on yourself. And when you put more pressure on yourself, well, then you, you, you stop being able to focus. Um, think about it. Whenever you're worried about something, what happens? You, you only can focus on what you're worried about. Every time it happens, like, oh my gosh, man, my, 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 uh, something's happening in my family. You can only focus on that. It makes it so hard to even work that when you put so much pressure on yourself, like I've got to perform, I've got to get this done. Well, then that's all you can think about is your, your perceived failures. When in fact you're making success, you just can't see it. And so, you know, when you talk to other land investors, new or people who have been, you know, going through coaching or whatever, a lot of people are in the same boat. They're putting too much pressure on themselves. They're trying to, to meet some artificial deadline that doesn't exist. It exists in their heads. So it's always kind of interesting yeah. to see where people are and to see that that's what I think people get out of boot camp is you're not alone. You're all in the same boat together. 
Yeah. I mean, Mike Zana, what's your advice to people that they're in their own way? I, I feel like 90% of business is really mental. The 10% is how to, and then it's just, you you got to get out of your own way at some, at some level. Yeah. Well, this is, this is the old paralysis by over analysis, right? I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about here and we see this all the time. And, um, you know, that's one of the biggest things that we can help people with is just they don't overthink it. Scott Todd's done is better than perfect. Uh, you know, th that whole, so, but my advice is just, you know, focus on the one thing at hand, you know, that book, the one thing is great. What's the one thing you can do today to move your business forward? What's the one thing that you can do that'll actually, uh, impact your life dramatically. And, and don't worry about all the other 10 things going on. Just focus on that that one thing, create the conditions that will bring it about, right? So if you want to have a, a lot of people responding and wanting to uh, sell you their land, well, you need to focus on the mailings, right? So that one thing you need to focus is on the mailings. But if you haven't done that yet, well, then you, your focus needs to be on getting a list. But if you haven't figured your county out yet, well, you're going to focus on that. So just work it backwards. Don't try to, don't worry about the end result of the mailing until you've done your county research and then focus on that one thing as you move your way down, uh, down the cycle. And, and to me, the the boot camp, I think that uh, the, the the boot camp was uh, was absolutely to me biggest takeaway is how emotional people get, how important this is to them. This is like really important to people. Like, and this is changing their lives. And I had the opportunity to work with a few people on the side and 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 really experience that. And it's powerful. This is something that is truly helping people change their lives in a way that's better right and that means different for you and for me and for everyone else like uh, I don't know what your fixed expenses are or anybody else's it doesn't matter I don't know what your pain points are but this business allows those to be solved because it creates space in your life it creates the income yes but it creates the space that also allows you to enjoy the other things in your life uh, um, so when I was reading on the way home from the plane a book was all about um, I love this whole minimalist idea it was talking about people who become minimalist like they realize these things in their life that they wanted to do and they never had time to even think about it because it's so busy with the clutter in their house and I think our business does the same thing it frees up the space and then like you say oceans of just energy come and now you're like well, what do I do now well what do you want to do what do you want to focus on what makes you happy and there's two other things that come for boot camp one someone came up to me and said this, it doesn't matter who, because said Scott Todd is a genius. Look at it, he doesn't want to hear it. He's shaking his head. Scott Todd is a genius, he said. And I believe it. Scott Todd is a genius. But then they also said I, I don't think so. Mike Zeno's quotes are amazing. But anyway. Oh, see, see what he did there? See what he did. See, <laughs> those, he, those are both true statements. He he gave Prove some it. love and then he then Prove he went it. in for his own. Yeah. Prove it. Prove it, Mike. Who said I'll it? I'll bring that person on the nightcap. We'll wait to do, do it live. Right. Live until in the then, nightcap. Until then, it's yeah. just a rumor. Oh, know, I know who. I know who it was. We know Kate. Scott Todd's a genius. We just don't know if someone well, else. Well, I, yeah, nobody's going to debate that. that one. Nobody's going to. I appreciate that. that, but Tate, you know, who, you know who it was. I know who it was. Was it who, Eric? Who it said? Count if it was Eric. No, no, it wasn't Eric. It was Scott Bossman. I know it was. That doesn't count. <laughs> that does not count. In fact, that's a negative. It's a negative for Mike Zeno. Yeah. I, I, lo I love that the wives are like complaining. My, my husband's going to bed voxing each other. They're voxing each other before bed. Well, you did hear that Mike and, uh, Mike and Scott both bought like matching outfits. That's what Laura said. Matching <laughs> socks, matching hats. Yeah. They're like but, twins now. Yeah, the Land Geek romance is, is really outfit. going. This just came yeah. in the mail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, looks like your wife's writing. Yeah. How about, how about Jeff Detmer with every, all, the, all the printables? I got land geek prints, you know, uh, like notepad. I like the big one. Gun. Yeah, the big one was nice. Yeah. You, you know, you know uh, speaking of Jeff, you know what was really cool, Mark, is I got an email from Jeff today, and he, he has asked me a couple things. But one of the things he said was, and I, I love this, he says, on Sunday before I left the hotel, I sold another property, this one from Land Moto. Your blast went out at 11 a.m., got me three responses by four and one bought. Well, How cool is that? Scott, I know, he, he sent me the same me, box. He emailed me this morning and said, two of those people are most likely going to convert into sales too. So one That's email amazing. blast, three potential sales. That's amazing. Not and bad. he sold one already at boot camp. So that weekend alone, what is that, four deals? Yeah. Four deals. And yeah. plus. So, go ahead, Tate. Well, I was going to say, how about Kyle Nabs the deal? 
Well, I was going to talk about Cowden. Don't take my takeaway. Oh, geez. I'm jumping the gun, but it, I'm just excited yeah. for him. Right. Like this is my, yeah. this is my boy. No, I know. I know. So, um, so many people came up to me and they said, Mark, you're a pretty good public speaker, but we feel like Eric Peterson should really be running the, the whole show. And <laughs> I agreed. So Eric, talk about uh, embracing the suck. How, what were your big boot camp takeaways? Besides first of all, the public speak more. First of all, boot camp would never happen if it relied on me. So we, we <laughs> that's not going to work. Um, secondly, <laughs> I would say that. Um, oh, I love that. We, we talked a lot um, in the VIP room about how important consistency is in your business, um, whether that be in marketing, whether it be in mailing. I mean, it just came up over and over and over again. Um, so, you know, I think it was great um, to discuss that and dig into that um, for that group. Um, the other thing uh, that I enjoy in boot camp, I mean, I don't really enjoy the, the part where I need to go up front and talk to everybody. Um, I think we all know that, but um, I really do enjoy kind of the one-to-one -one stuff where um, people have questions and, you know, I have the chance to encourage them in their business and, you know, maybe show them tips or techniques or, or just generally tell them about, you know, what I've done and how it might relate to something that they can do. Um, to me, I mean, that's, that's really what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Mike is Brent Bowers in flight school. He's in flight school. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so Brent's in flight yes. school. Yes, yes. And, and, and so we're talking about deals and he tells us a story about how he, how he locks up a deal for 60000 and he doesn't have the money. So he basically sells it doing a wholesale deal, assigning the contract for 100000 So he, he netted in the deal after everything... $35,000. So we're kind of, you know, uh, talking about, well, how'd you sell it? And this is one of my bootcamp takeaways. And I've never even thought of this. I didn't think it would really work in our business. He was doing bandit signs, bandit signs. Tate, have you heard of anyone doing bandit signs for raw land? No, not, not in the traditional sense of like, like that we see for other forms of real estate, but raw land, I mean, Never heard of that. That was a first for me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eric Peterson, ever heard of a bandit sign? I have not. I've heard of, yeah, people putting a for sale sign on their property, but um, not bandit signs. Yeah. Scott Todd, are you going to start recommending bandit signs in flight school? Wait, you're on mute. There you go. No. Sorry, I'm, I'm not going to okay. recommend it because um, one, I think that it has to be the right property. But the other thing that he said was that, and I'm not sure because we didn't ask for clarification if he was talking about actually the signs just around town or if he was asked, he, was, he even said at one point that they went to the property and put them on the tree, a tree up there. So I'm not sure if he was using the bandit sign on a tree to help mark it. Uh, but I think, I think that you know, one logistic, unless you're in that area, logistically, uh, you got to find somebody to go do it. And he did recommend some good, good resources that they are to kind of track the, the work that they do. Um, so, so they could take a picture of it, et cetera. But you know, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to, before I went and recommend it, I'd have to kind of test it out myself, I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, you know, there's always that boot camp magic. So Jeff Depper closed two deals. He had a 600% return, 800% return at boot camp. And then Kyle Nab sent me this via Voxer. And you can, see, you can hear like he's at the airport talking. You can hear like the background. Can you guys hear it? Turn it up. No. Yeah, I can't hear it. Hey, Mark, sitting here at the airport and uh, with the boot camp magic to, the, to work today and got a potential buyer on the phone. And by the time I hung up, I uh, made $5,100 on the property. I only spent $600 on it. So boot camp magic is working. Super grateful. And 
thanks for everything. We'll see you at the next boot camp. Boot camp magic. So he spent 600, you made 5,100. It's a pretty good return. 800% over 800% return. Um, it's amazing. It, uh, Scott, it ever happens every boot camp. Someone closes a deal. Right. We closed two deals during boot camp. Yep. Now you, you, how many deals did you close during boot camp? Uh, I think two or three. Um, I think, I think two. Two. All right. Eric? Yeah. One. One. So see, it's boot camp magic. Jeannie, this is why you got to come to boot camp. Every boot camp. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, I closed one while you guys were gone. All right. Tell us about the deal. Uh, it was an eBay. Uh, we talked about that last week. So I did another one on eBay. And I have had really great success um, communicating with the buyers. I, I, I talked about that a little bit last week, but I am, um, you know, I, I really try to go over and beyond when it comes to customer service because I want them to come back and buy more property in the future. So, um, and plus I want to get a good rating on eBay as well. So people know that I'm serious. I'm a serious seller, but I I've really enjoyed, um, the relationships I've built with the buyers and the sellers. How, how was your return? Um, was it 500%? I believe so. It's good. I don't know my numbers as well as you guys do. So I got, I got to, um, work on that a little bit better. But I, I, I'm just so excited hearing what you guys are doing that it motivates me every week. But I didn't tell you something. After last week, after last boot camp, I ended up in bed again. So this flu has taken on almost, knocked me off for two to three weeks. Holy cow. Yeah. So I, I'm disappointed I didn't make boot camp, but I'll be ready for the next one in Scottsdale. Because I, I really haven't, I enjoyed the one in Scottsdale. So for those that are listening, for our listening audience, is worth your time, your energy to book a flight, to book a hotel. It is worth everything to be there. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty magical. And then you get to actually, you know, talk directly to Mike Zeno. Who for me is like kind of like, you know, like like a like a human uh just Buddha. Just I just feel very relaxed, <laughs> just very calm, very centered, very at ease. You know, I don't know, Mike, how, how do you do that? What's, what's the secret? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just love uh, being in the present moment. I think, you know, what was cool too is Damien was there and he was talking about presence, right? One of his, yeah. uh, you know, uh, EQRP, Damien, if you guys don't know who he is, look him up, Damien Lupo, very cool individual. And he was there talking about presence. And I think that and Damien and I had the opportunity with my wife to eat a few meals together. And we talk about that. And I think that's part of it all, right? Just being present uh, with the people that you're with or the situation you're in. I think that really can help everybody. And it's huge that, that uh, just having that awareness to be in that moment. Yeah. And I think like what Scott said in the beginning of the podcast, it makes it difficult to even just be present if you're stressed out. Like what is stress? Stress is being, you know, taking the present moment, but thinking about something that happened in the past or worrying about something in the future and not even enjoying, you know, that present moment because of that, that stress or that anxiety. I've got to, you know, close a deal or what, you know, what, that, you know, what Eric Peterson say to me about that tip last week, I totally forgot it and didn't write it down, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I think that, just being in that room of like-minded people really can, can sort of ease a lot of that stress and then um, help you in, in a way uh, be more present, I think, with the business, kind of knowing like you're not alone, right? Jeannie. You know what? I, I want to agree with you because in Scottsdale, I saw, I saw Mike and I didn't know him at the time, but this is the first podcast I've actually been on with my coach. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But I will tell you, I, I, I've said it before, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it without him. And I've had a lot of life situations happen. And I really believe if you're going to do something great, um, life really happens and it comes at you full speed ahead. And if it wasn't for Mike to get me through some of those things, because I have panicked because this is, everything is so new. And he is Every time we've been on the on a call together, it feels like a nine one one for me. I feel like oh, it's a crisis, 
but he, he really calms me down and, it, and breaks it down and explains, you can do it. Just keep going. Don't give up. Just keep going. And listening to those soothing words and encouragement is huge. And I, as a new person on the podcast and as a new investor, I just really, really want to encourage our listening audience to do the coaching, do the flight school, to really get involved and don't give up. And when you feel like you want to give up, reach out to all of you guys here and, and listen to the podcast, listen to everything that's available out there to encourage you because it's not only a great business, but it's one that you can encourage others to do as well. But I, I love yeah. Mike. I love him. Yeah, no, I think that's great because I, I think for most people, they sort of have the scarcity mindset. I don't want anyone to know about this. And when you do the math, this market is so big and there's so few people actually doing it. No hedge funds, no private equity groups, no big money. I mean, we'll all run out of money before we run out of deal flow. So, you know, it's nice to have that abundance mentality. Like if I can do it, you can do it. And um, you don't see that a lot either. Um, and I think people feel that actually at boot camp too. Like we're really free with the information that we give. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's, that's really nice. So, so thank you for that, Jeannie. Um, I want to sort of shift to a topic that Eric wanted to bring up from uh, Dan Salvatore. So Eric, you've got the round table floor. All right. So Dan wants us to talk about um, hiring VAs on Upwork. Um, you know, how do we write the, the job description? What categories do we post in? How do we find the candidates, interview them, hire them, pay them? Just the whole works. So do you want me yeah, to start my, with my, my answer or are we going to go around? Yeah, I mean, my short answer, Dan, is if you're in coaching or flight school, like apply to, to see if you can get a land geek VA. They're already trained. Sure. But if you don't want to do that, uh, Eric, you start. All right. So, yeah, I mean, first of all, hiring land geek VAs is a far um, – easier method. Uh, they're already trained uh, to do certain tasks in the business. So your life gets a lot easier if you use them. However, um, if you do want to go find your own VA for a certain function of your business, um, you know, Upwork is a great place for that. Um, I guess um, maybe one example or common example might be kind of managing part of your, your Craigslist ad process, um, whether that's a poster or a writer. Um, so for me, um, I would post that those kind of ads um, in probably the marketing category, maybe creative writing, um, if it's a writer. Um, if I'm hiring a, a Craigslist, someone to actually work on Craigslist, whether that's with the auto poster or some other method. Um, I'm going to avoid using the word Craigslist. I might say classified website. I might say, um, general web marketing, et cetera. Um, but if you mention the word Craigslist, it, the, your ad's going to get pulled. Um, so, um, other things to keep in mind, a lot of times, um, the way I find VAs on Upwork is after I've posted my job description, um, you have the ability to like go invite people to the job as opposed to waiting for them to come to you. So I do some, some searches and try to find people to invite. I think it helps you get more candidates, um, quicker for sure. Um, so I do that. And then I just wait for, um, those applications to come in and, and as they begin to come in, I begin to filter them just based on their response. Um, a lot of times you can tell if, if they've answered your questions or, or just based on their experience, whether they might be a good fit or not. Um, and from there, I'll take them to, to like a trial. Um, I like to do like a fixed price trial for a certain amount of work. Um, you know, it might be like, if we're talking about writing ads, you know, maybe I give them a schedule for 10 ads over a week and, um, you know, pay them, I don't know, five or $10 as a fixed price as they try that. Um, ideally I would like to have three to five 
people doing that test simultaneously. So I could, you know, maybe pick the best two or three writers from that group. Um, and, you know, as they're working, I'm just evaluating how they're doing and, and deciding whether or not, you know, to continue with them. Um, but that's, I mean, there, I guess there's so many different things we could hire for on Upwork, but that's just one example of, of how I would handle it. All right, that's, that's a really uh, detailed answer. I don't know how much more we can add to that, Eric Peterson. But I nailed guess, it. Nailed it. Let's just go around and see if anyone's doing anything <laughs> differently uh, or more effectively. Jeannie? You uh, want to add uh, to that? Now, Mike, you got to close your ears on this one, but uh -huh. I'm still I know, I'm still doing everything myself. I know he, Mike doesn't want to hear that, but I'm – Everything. Right. I do everything. It brought you a lot of joy and confidence, so I'm okay with you know, it. it really, yeah. you. But now you know how to hire a VA. I do, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I, I agree with the confidence. I, I need to build the confidence right now. So, yep, I do it all. Yeah, I and mean, we it's talked about this in boot camp. Like, like, Jeannie, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because if you don't fully really feel confident yourself, it's mm -hmm. hard to pass it off, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then you're abdicating as, as opposed to delegating. And you really want to delegate because you want to be bulletproof. If they, they fall by the wayside, well, someone's got to complete the task and it yeah. should be, you know, it could ideally could be you doing it. Or if they ask you a question, there needs to be some depth to that answer for them. So they, so they know you truly understand it. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong in the beginning, doing a lot yourself, getting competence, getting confidence, and then feeling confident enough to pass it off. So, well, you know, when my buyer, when my buyers have questions, um, because I'm doing it all, I can actually answer their questions within, you know, five minutes. So I, I'm on it really fast um, because I know, I know everything that I'm doing. I know everything about, I know everything in my business and, and I'm, and, and they've actually said they're impressed that I can get back with them so quickly, but I know it, I know the answer right away, but I know, I know it's really important to start act, um, to automate and start doing that. And I understand the value of that, but I'm not at that point yet. Cause again, I have to build the confidence. So you're right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mike Zeno, you have anything you want to add? Well, that was really comprehensive by Eric. Cause he, but he, you know, he's a detail oriented guy. I think he's an incredible coach and, and a great uh, person to work with. And that's why you can all see it, right? He's so thorough, but I would just say like when I hire somebody, I always, in the very initial ad, I put specific questions because if they don't answer those, sometimes people on Upwork will just throw out their application after application. So they're not, if they're not reading the fine print, I don't even want to work with them. So I'll throw a couple quick little, you know, questions in there. Um, you know, to me, hiring Upwork, I've had people say, well, I put out this ad and I haven't got anybody. We heard what Eric said about, you know, inviting people. It's like mailing and marketing. It's a consistency issue. If you do one ad out there on Upwork and you think, geez, that's it. Where's my VA? Um, well, you got to learn a little bit. You got to put a lot of ads out there. You got to invite a lot of people. You got to stay consistent like everything else in the business. And then I believe in hire fast, fire fast. Give them a shot. They don't work out. Don't become emotionally attached to them. Don't just like we don't emotionally attach to our land. Uh, we don't emotionally attach to your VA. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Tate Litchfield, anything else you want to add? Nah, uh, Eric summed it up pretty well. I think that one of the most important takeaways uh, from his comments were to hire, hire multiple people for the same responsibility. Right, you want to you want to have multiple people who are capable of doing the job, and the more people you hire for that initial uh, trial period, you know that gives you the, the ability to sort through them and and keep the best uh, performing VAs, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I I can tell you uh, when I'm constructing an Upwork ad, it's it's basically you know three things copy, paste, and edit. So I look at somebody else's really good ad for something very similar, let's say, you know, creative article writing and copy, paste, edit for our business. So Dan, that's, that's the quick and dirty way. Uh, Scott Todd, anything else? Well, no, I think you guys have covered it. I would just tell you, Dan, you could always go back to the flight school module that I talked about that. I did a thorough job of explaining the process and everything. And I even gave you the, the Van Halen clause uh, tip. So would tell you that's a good place to go.
All right. Awesome. Yeah. Even Mike Zeno doesn't know what the Van Halen clause is. Mike, you got to sign up for flight school. So then you can learn it. Um, I thought this was a really meaty uh, podcast. Jeannie. Um, could you tell our listening audience, how would they go about hiring a VA with land, the land geek specifically VAs? I mean, I know, but I just, for those that are listening, how would they go about doing that? So they have to be in flight school or one-on-one coaching to even be um, sort of qualified for the Land Geek VA program because we're kind of keeping it, you know, small right now. And so the best place to go is support at thelandgeek.com. Um, email Danielle directly and she'll get you in the queue. So as we, as we take on new clients, absolutely. But um, it's really, really important for us to have quality control. We're hiring new VAs all the time, training them, but we want to make sure that it's like an amazing experience. So we want to under promise and over deliver. Um, for sure on that, but people have been loving them, loving them. Uh, I do want to just remind everybody, if you want to get into the May flight school, get on with, with Mike Zane or Scott Bossman, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call there. Oh, and by the way, um, dirt rich is really close to coming out. Uh, you can download the first chapter for free. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash dirt slash rich and uh, download the first chapter for free. Um, we're going to have a bunch of goodies involved with that as well after the um, initial launch. So I'm excited. Eric Peterson, are you excited? For sure. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Eric was a, was a big help with the recovery. I didn't take his advice. I should have, but. That's Okay. It's okay. I, I like it. What do you guys, Jeannie, do you like it? It's clean. Oh, what, it's what, what, did, what did Eric say? Did he like the black cover? He liked the black cover. He wanted something more bold. I see. I like the black cover. I like the black cover too, Eric. So, uh, but My I still, did, I still too. like it though. It's good. And you know, I like the word lazy in the, in the subtitle. That's yeah, good. Yeah. How one ambitiously lazy geek created passive income in real estate without renters, renovations, and rehabs. Um, so yeah, just go to uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash dirt dash rich. Download the first chapter for free. Get on a call with Mike and Scott. Learn more. Um, anything else? Are we good? Mike Zeno? I'm good. You guys need a quote? I'll do that. Whatever you need. Yeah, we, we need the tip of the week. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually really a good one. Scott's going to love this one. This is uh, something I was actually reading today. And look at how, look at like synchronicity, right? How this is all coming together. Henry David Thoreau um, says, the real efficient laborer will be found not to crowd his day with work, but will saunter to his tasks surrounded by a wide halo of ease and leisure, a wide margin for relaxation to his day. So basically you're gonna have the kernels of time, but don't exaggerate the value of the husk. So basically don't get caught up on all the emotion and all the anxiety. And you know, when you get this business down, that's what it should be like, right? It should be just a flow, a process, relaxation. Like right? we wanna say Zen-like, we could say that, but I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty kind of relevant. No, it's great. So Tate, Scott, Eric and I are too tired to even <laughs> understand. Like, like why not come up with a more intellectually you know just the kernel quote, and then the husk you know? focus yeah. on the kernel not the husk yeah genie likes it like the rest of us are like i do what yeah. what i need a nap after that yeah i love the tips i love the quotes and the tips from you guys ah oh, it's awesome to hear yeah Great, great quote that I don't understand, Mike. Can, <laughs> can, you, can you say it one more Colonel time? Husk. Colonel Husk. Focus on wait, wait, the Colonel Husk. Say, say it one more time. Colonel Husk. Colonel oh, the whole Husk. thing? Yeah, yeah. The really efficient laborer will be found not to crowd his day with work, but will saunter, a la Eric Peterson, to his tasks surrounded by a wide halo of ease and leisure. There will be a wide margin for relaxation to his day. So here it is. He is only earnest to secure the kernels of time. It does not exaggerate the value of the husk. Isn't that awesome. Uh, now, now I think I'm getting it more. Think Eric Peterson. Yeah. Gita. Gita. <laughs> the Gita. Eric, Eric embodies that quote for sure. Scott Todd definitely embodies that quote. He's working on the boat. 
You know, that guy's living the dream. Date <laughs> for sure. I I think I am. You know, I'm running the genie at, at the local coffee place. You know, so it's awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the listeners. Just remind you the only way we're going to get Jeannie Morham to come back on the Roundtable podcast is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We are going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And pretty soon I'm going to be able to say the book Dirt Rich, which I'm really excited about, but not yet. So just do that now. Um, Scott, we're good? We're good, Mark. All right. Tate, good? Yeah, fantastic. Eric? Eric? All good. Jeannie? Super. Mike? Very good. All right. One, <laughs> two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh man, it never, it never gets. That was magical at boot camp, by the way. I thought it went very well. It was, it, it was magical at boot camp. You know, in a live room, it's way easier, for sure. By the way, I, I tweaked my back somehow. <laughs> I think it was like the heavy AV equipment. But like, you know how like you wake up and like I felt something. Like now, like I've tweaked my back. I couldn't really. I didn't. I didn't bike this morning. I haven't. I'm not on the treadmill. I did push-ups, and that hurt my back. Any any back advice? Call Scott Bossman. I did, I did the icy hot kind of stuff. I don't know. You know what's amazing, Mark? Factor? Is, uh, did you go for your massage yesterday? No, my wife said not to. She's like, your back's tweaked. They're, they could get worse. What you need, I don't know why my video's out of foot. You need a little bat and you just beat it back in. Ah. Beat it back in. <laughs> Mark, what about cupping? I, if it's, it's really bad, you can use the big bat. What is that? Yeah. Is that like the uh, like like I know cupping? Is this like uh, the needle yeah. thing, right? No, no. They put the they do the suction cups on your back. You look at it done. You have these huge bruises up, but it feels great. It makes you you have to. It actually drains all your energy out. So you better just get ready to. Ch- It'd be good right now for boot camp. You should go get cupped. No, no, but like you got to go to like acupuncturist to get cupping. Well, yeah. No, it doesn't have. It's, there's no penetration. This is cupping. They're not putting needles into you. This is cupping. They're just sucks. They're putting it on that sucks the air out. This is yeah, really, but then my my back's gonna be all red. Can well, I just take you, a pill? Like we'll a, a Western for a while, and you know, flex the lats. But it'll 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 be good. <laughs> and I, you know what I think that is? Two words: placebo effect. <laughs> no way! It's real. Eric, placebo or no placebo? Eric. Cupping. No, I think there might be some legitimacy to it. My wife uh, has been getting acupuncture recently for her wrist. She's got problems with her wrist. It's starting to make a difference. All right. There you go. Tate, placebo or no placebo? Uh, You know, I've never done any of the cupping or the acupuncture, but I'm a big believer in like, you know, getting a good massage periodically. I think that makes a big difference so maybe this would work i don't know i'd try anything at least once All i right. can convince you and look and, and i'll relate to our, mail, our business okay so you send out one mailing and you think you're going to be a successful investor right it's not going to happen someone goes to one session for acupuncture or for cupping or yoga it's a lifestyle. It's something that has to be, but you can't just go, you know, people live their whole life not eating well, uh, not exercising, and all of a sudden get, get a problem in life and like, I'm going to go get acupuncture and solve it. Mm, sorry, no. You got to have it as part of your holistic lifestyle. Just like you can't just mail one time. You got to consistently mail and market. It's the same. See how it comes back? back to it? Yeah, yeah. You, you, by, by the way, Mike, I did do your exercises this morning. <laughs> so Mike was in the gym with me early. Mike and I worked out together. <laughs> And he, he goes into downward dog yoga stretch, and all of a sudden he goes down and does like this push up. So I tried it this morning. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> and he tweaked it back. <laughs> well, I mean, I tweaked it earlier, though. I already tweaked it, but the stretching was really good. Next time I'll show you so. the breathing. Hey, okay, hey awesome. Mark, have you, have you done hot yoga? I have, but I haven't done it recently. You think that'll help? Yeah, or I. I I haven't done any of those things except hot yoga, but <laughs> I, I love my chiropractor. So I would, 
I would go to Mark's, Mark's a hot guy doing yoga. That's not the same thing, though. Mm. <laughs> hot, yeah, that's not hot. Yoga. <laughs> that's a that's a hot land geek doing yoga. Yeah, I mean, Mike knows how it is for me. You know, just just walking in the world where people just like you know, I walk by somebody like, boy, that guy's hot. <laughs> it's hard, go, it's hard being me. It's the Godfather. It's the land geek. Yeah, it's you know. <laughs> I deal with it, you know, I'm used to it. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go eat lunch. Thanks, everybody. See ya. See ya. Thanks. See ya.